Hello, welcome to this short video on using the iPhone configuration utility in conjunction with the Sophos mobile control software. Now for the Sophos SMC, uh, in order to control the Apple devices, whether that be the iPhones, the iPads or the iPod touches, uh, along those kind of lines, uh, we need to set up a profile using the iPhone configuration utility. Once this profile has been created, we can upload that into the SMC in order to push out to those particular managed devices. Now in this short video I'll just go through the configuration utility very quickly uh, and then you can uh, say have a go with this, save this uh, and upload this to the SMC uh, to manage your devices. So the first thing we've done, load up the configuration utility, new configuration profiles and we've got one here profile name 2. So in the general window we can give this a uh, profile name and we can give this a unique identifier. The unique identifier can be any particular uh, name that you want to have uh, to be able to identify this profile um, and uh, with this in mind you can actually put numerous numbers of profiles onto particular devices. So you could have a standard base profile that, that would just enforce a passcode, something along those kind of lines uh, and then if you want to push another profile out to that particular device say with Wi-Fi details or exchange details, something along those kind of lines, as long as this identifier is different those profiles will quite happily sit alongside each other on those Apple devices. So you give that uh, particular profile uh, identifier, I'll just call it test profile put some organization details in there, a brief description and here we've got security option on whether this pro com profile can be removed from the device by the end user. So you've got the option there to never allow it to be removed, always allow it to be removed or you can have an authentication password. So this will be very different to the uh, PIN code that they will have to access the device. If they want to remove the profile manually, they will need to enter that particular authorization password. So you can set that as a particular option. In this option here, I'll just set that to never. The next thing we're going to look at is the passcode policy. And what you can here, do here is actually force the devices uh, to have a particular passcode. And what you can do uh, with the passcode is very similar to what we do with the uh, Active Directory passwords uh, for domain users. We can have different password lengths, we can have various different levels of complexity in there. So you can set a standard four, uh, five digit PIN all the way up to a 16 digit passcode for these particular devices. We can have a certain number of complex characters within that particular password. We can set a password age as well. So again very similar to how we do it with the Active Directory users uh, you can set similar kind of complexity requirements to their mobile phone devices. We also have the option here to auto lock the device after a certain period of time. If the user unlocks the device, puts it down on the table, uh, then after a couple of minutes we can actually force that to be to be locked. We also have a passcode history, again similar to how you would potentially set it up with an Active Directory account. So you can't have the same passcode as you had the same five, previous five times, ten times, uh, that kind of thing. We also have a grace period for device lock, so you you can either uh, force a device uh, to, uh, once a device has been uh, locked, uh, if someone wants to unlock it say within five minutes, uh, you can actually uh, get them to unlock the device without having to put their passcode in. This obviously reduces the security level, um, but you'll need to weigh that up uh, with the usability of that particular device. We also have the option here for the maximum number of failed attempts uh, before all data will be erased off those particular devices. So if someone steals the phone or if the phone gets stolen uh, and the passcode is put in six or seven times for example, we can actually get that device uh, to self-wipe in that particular situation. So that's the passcode complexity. One of the other things we're going to look at here is the actual restrictions that you can put on these, on these Apple devices. And as you can see here, we've got quite a range uh, of restrictions that we can put on these devices at various different levels. So what we can do here, we can allow uh, or disallow the installation of applications on the, t on the to the devices. So this is anything from the application store. We can stop the end users being able to do that. We can stop the end users being able to do in-app purchases. So if they've already got an app on their phone um, and they need to buy something within that app, for whatever reason we can disallow that as well. 
One of the other options we've got here is to allow or disallow the use of a camera. Now from a DLP point of view it's quite possible that people can take snapshots of things, can take pictures of things within uh, an office or an office environment, uh, anything with confidential information and then take a screen capture of that uh, away and this is something that you can restrict uh, with it using this particular utility. Various different options there as you can see we can block access to the iTunes store uh, we've also got these built-in applications here so we can again uh, control the use of YouTube or the iTunes store or even uh, Safari itself um, and if you are allowing use of uh, Safari which is the web browser on the Apple devices um, then you can also have control over what the users can do uh, in various different aspects of that from a security side of things so block pop-up windows and disenable enable or unenable JavaScript for example one of the other options we've got here is allowing access to iCloud services. Now if you've got confidential information uh, on these particular devices you might want uh, to stop people to upload things via the iCloud. Uh, you might want them to just have them on the particular devices. So you can block access to iCloud, stop the backups going up to iCloud, uh, stop the document syncs and even the photo streams as well. A little bit further down uh, we've got uh, the option to allow different content ratings as well. So if you have a corporate device um, and you are allowed people to use particular apps or whatever on there, you can actually set a content rating uh, to allow uh, only you know, apps for a, a certain age range or a certain level. So there's various different aspects that we can do there uh, with, uh, with the applications and the built-in features within, uh, within the Apple devices. Now one of the other options uh, I wanted to mention, I won't go through every single one of the options here in the configuration utility. I will mention the Wi-Fi. You can configure a Wi-Fi profile as long as you have the SSID uh, and a password. Then you can set these devices to be able to access a Wi-Fi network. So you have, if you have uh, a wireless network within your corporate environment uh, and you want users to be able to access uh, this particular wireless network through their mobile devices but you don't want to keep giving out the password what you can do is you can set it and hard code it within this profile push this profile out to uh, numerous devices at the same time using the SMC and then they can connect onto the Wi-Fi this is also very handy if you need to have a password change for whatever reason you can change the password in the profile save the profile upload it to the SMC, push it out to all those particular devices and you can make sure that all those devices will have the updated password and still be able to connect onto the Wi-Fi. One of the last things I'll mention here is the Exchange Active Sync. And here you can actually hard code to uh, allow email via these particular um, Apple devices. So you would put in your Exchange Active Sync host, which can either be your uh, email uh, Exchange server itself, or you can set up the SMC to be uh, an Active Sync proxy. You would put in domain details, and you can put in wildcards for the users and the email addresses. So this means that once the phone is provisioned, the user will be prompted for their password and they will have access to their email account without having to put any of that information in themselves. They'll also be unable to change any of that information so you can't modify the email accounts uh, and such like if they want to try and get to a different account or if someone wants to try and change anything maliciously. And then you can be confident that those phones and those devices are locked down uh, as tightly as you want them to be. That's a very short introduction on using the configuration utility um, and of course you can use this uh, with con in conjunction with the Sophos mobile control software to give full control over your mobile devices, not just the Apple devices uh, but the SMC also supports uh, Android and Windows Mobile and BlackBerry devices. Well thank you very much for your time, I hope this has helped you.